Good morning, stamping friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lori Heiling, if you're new to my channel, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm always excited to share projects that I've been working on. Well, happy December 1st. Can you believe we're into December already? I cannot believe it, and gosh, only 24 more days and we'll be at Christmas. So we need to crank out a few more Christmas projects. So I thought I'd share one with you. Um, this one I'm gonna share, well, I'm gonna um, show it to you as I create it. So let's just put it that way. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna use the little treat box die. And um, this is in the holiday catalog. And you're going to want to snag this before this catalog is over, which is um, January 4th. And then we can order from the new spring catalog, which if you're a demonstrator, we get to order from that today. Now, remember, if you ever were interested in signing up to be a demonstrator and be on my team, um, you also can get your products before everybody else and you get to get in on the pre-order. So if you sign up today or anytime in December, you get to order before customers do. So let me know if you are interested and I can help you get started. It's always fun to play with the new things, even though we're <laughs> in the middle of winter. All right, so as I was saying, we're going to use the little treat box dies, and um, we're going to trim off a little bit of the front, and I already marked it because I did make a sample one, but I want to show you where I cut that so you don't have to try to figure it out. What you'll do is you'll take the right-hand side that has the cute little scallop there and put it at the one and one-fourth inch mark. And remember, you can um, look at the markings on the right side of the slider area where the blade will hit um, or the left side. But for smaller pieces, I tend to use the right side. So just line the top of the scallop to the one and one fourth inch mark and then just cut like that. All right. And that's all right if my pencil line is showing because you will not see that. You wouldn't even need to make your pencil line because I told you where to cut it. <laughs> so, all right, now to assemble this box, I'm just going to first of all just fold on all the score lines. And um, this box technically doesn't even need adhesive, but I like to put adhesive on just to make it a little bit stronger. So once you have all your... Um, creases folded, you're just going to um, snap these together and it doesn't matter which side goes first because um, the tabs are going to be covered up. So let me get that other side in. All right, now we, that part you don't even have to, but because we want to flip these up, that's where you will add adhesive. And I am using the um, mono adhesive glue for most of this project. Um, I like using liquid glue because sometimes you can kind of maneuver it before it's glued down solid. So that's why I like to use that. Tear and tape works as well too, but I just had this handy. So then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side and stick that down. You wanna make sure your edges are tucked inside there all right and then I just like to hold it and press on it flat like this okay so that's all you have to do to make the box now let's make this a little more interesting than this <sighs> now I'll, I'll as I um, create this I will let you know what inspired me how I came up with this all right we are going to make a little Christmas ball but for this, I'm gonna need this because like I said, we are using a lot of glue. Start with a one inch um, red foil sheet, which is in the holiday catalog. And this designer series paper is actually from Heartwarming Hugs. And this is a 12 by 12 paper. This is the same paper that we used at my retreat this year, the Cozy Craft Retreat. All right, we are just gonna trim this down a little bit and let's go right below the green and then we'll go a little bit above the red 
we just want to make this look a little bit more like an ornament so put some liquid glue on the back of that and let's just put this right in the middle here and I think I told you I used the one inch punch all right now to get the top of the ornament it doesn't quite look like an ornament yet so we need to make a little tab at the top for the top of the ornament so what I do when I'm looking for things like this I just kind of look through my punches and my dies and I landed on the vase builder punch and I'm choosing the one right over here and you really only need the top part so you don't have to waste your whole piece of gold paper so just trim a little bit off there and gold file gold foil sheets we sell year round so you can find that in the annual catalog now I'm just going to trim off a little bit on top maybe like a not even a quarter of an inch and then we're going to put a little bit of glue on the gold foil sheet and again this is when you're going to be glad that you can maneuver it because you want to get it nice and straight and it just gives that little top of the ball ornament so that's the ornament now how are these going to fit together um, I'm not going to give it away yet see if you can guess what I'm making all right the next part is we're going to take this whoops that one has writing on it um well I guess that's all right you know what hmm I need uh, let's just go with this all right, so this is almost symmetrical. It doesn't really matter which side you use. And we are going to, um, let me grab one more. I wanted to have this done before. Oh wait, I found another one. I, I knew I cut out another one. We need two of these. All right, let's start with this one because this one is written on <laughs> when I made the pattern. All right we are going to glue this little thing on can you tell what this is this just gave away the project now this is granny apple green and what shape is that can you tell and this is real red and also the treat box is real red as well all right we're going to glue it on here and i'm pretty sure you probably have guessed it by now this is the grinch and so we are just going to put a little bit of glue on his hand and adhere his arm on there and now I can tell you why or how I got inspired to make this so last year I started something with my grandkids and um, I hold a Grinch party for them and I'm gonna do that each year hopefully maybe even into their teens and maybe adult I don't know let me get back to the project and then I'll keep telling you the story and don't worry about these patterns because in this um, video or in the video and then at the end I will put the free PDF with these patterns in so you don't have to worry about like how did she make that this part is just squiggly lines in a, an oval too bad there's not a little punch like that but I just had to kind of do my own thing all right so these I just kind of made up and cut out um, they do have a lot of this on the internet if you just look at the shape of his hand so it's not a big deal but to make it easier for you I put it in one graphic but this you can't find because that's a handmade pattern <laughs> all right so here we have his hand now he's gonna be holding this ornament so we're gonna flip this over to the back side all right and now we need that gold where's my gold ribbon and what we're gonna do is put a little glue dot right in the center of his two fingers like this because we want this to hold the ornament. And this gold ribbon is a combination. It comes with the shaded spruce ribbon and the holiday catalog. And it's just a really fine, um, kind of a silky gold ribbon. It's really nice. Now let's do the same with that ornament that he's gonna be holding. So, whoops, try to put it, whoopsie, let me get a glue dot off of here. <laughs> try to put the glue dot as high as you can without showing it on the other side. All right, now, when you place it under here, you wanna just slip it underneath and we've got a 
make the top of his ornament touching his finger. So make sure you put this up high enough. Once you get it positioned, just press down and then trim it off. All right, now what I'm gonna do, since we're on the back side, and this one, normally I wouldn't do the back side because you can't see it, but because this is gonna stick out a ways, we are gonna have to make this look a little bit better on the back side. So what I did was I just cut out the same exact size. So you're actually gonna cut out two of all of these, two hands, two um, arms, two little white fur things. Um, so anyway, but back to my story here while I'm gluing on all these things. So I do a Grinch party, and like I said, last year was the first year, and I had a few Grinch things anyway, because I, I just like the Grinch story and Grinch things. But each year I add more things to it. So this year I'm going to make these little treat things. I have a cute little ornament ball that I got at a craft fair. Um, what else did I get? We make treats. I made some Grinch treats and um, we watched the Grinch movie. Now at the ages that they are, um, Addie is turning two this week. Um, she finally graduated and can come. As a baby, it's hard because you're trying to entertain the older ones. But this year, Addie can come and then Stella is six and Reese is four. So that's who's coming. And we haven't planned the date yet, but it will be sometime before Christmas. And we just watched the half an hour one. And um, I'll, I'm going to do some games this time. And then I made this green jello. It actually comes in the prepackaged kind. I'll have to put a picture on and show you. But anyway, I asked what they enjoyed last year. And they all or they both said, you've got to do the green jello. So that for sure is coming back. And then also a highlight was... Um, Dan, my husband, took us all out in the back of his pickup and we drove through the neighborhood with blankets and music blaring and we um, looked at all the Christmas lights. So we just had a really good time. Okay, as you can see, I'm just gluing on so it looks good from the back side. I'm not going to make the little tab because that's not really a big deal, but let's just put something and cover up this string here so it looks a little bit better and I'm not going to do the other side of the ornament the fancy side we'll just make this one plain all right so now when you see it from the back side it won't look so bad all right now let's turn it the right way now the last thing that you or not the last thing there's a couple more steps I think I can get rid of this now and this all right now we just have to position his arm hanging out of the box. So I'm gonna use liquid glue again and just put some there. And remember, liquid glue, you can move it around. So I'm gonna go about right, I think about right here. That's good. And um, this little, isn't that fun? Oh, I just love this. So anyway, like I was saying, I was thinking, what else? I want to have them go home with a little treat. So I thought, oh, that little treat box is calling my name for this project. And um, you can, if you want, you can kind of place his fingers in between the ornaments so it doesn't bounce around as much. But it's kind of fun that it does as well. So either way. Now, we need a couple more little things. And guess what? I forgot to punch out. A heart so I'm gathering a heart <laughs> while I'm talking here so we just want the scalloped heart punch I'm just gonna punch one out and I love it when you can use punches for other things um, I did one earlier because I had to make a pattern I'm kind of anal that way I want to make sure it turns out and I don't you know fuss with it when I'm on camera so what I did is I made a camera and I went from the bottom scallop and let me count how many I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I went to ten and I don't think I have to draw it on here. I think I can just hold it up. So you want ten scallops in this and then just snip that off. And that was about the straightest edge I could get because once you get up here, it's too curved and we want straight. All right, now let me just snip off these tiny little ends here and we will put more glue on here. 
and we are going to put this on the front because when the Grinch has his outfit on, he is dressed in a Santa suit. And so that's going to be the, the color part. And then last, let's just put two little buttons on here. And this is just with a one fourth inch hole punch that everybody has in your stash. All right, and here's the front of it. Isn't that fun? Okay, now that we're just missing some treats in there. So you will not believe what I found at the grocery store. We have fries here. I'm not sure what you have, but these Hershey Kisses are sugar cookie flavored. Can you believe that? And we know the Grinch probably likes cookies. I think he has cookies in the movie, right? Doesn't he steal Santa's cookies? So, and look at how sweet of Hershey's to make the wrapping match our DSP. Is that perfect or what? Look at that. Oh my gosh. All right, there is our little treat. I'll hold it this way so you can see it. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, I can't wait to give this up. Now I have to make, um, I already have another one here. So I have two made and then I have one third one for little Addie. All right, well, that's our project today. Thank you for joining me. And again, like I said, I will have the PDF on my blog so you don't have to worry about the patterns. You can just trace them, just print it out and then trace them. And then don't forget to make double of all of these so that when you see it from the backside, it doesn't look so bad. So there you have it. Well, have a great week and I will see you on Friday morning again. Take care, bye-bye.